that I've never done. Oh. I think I just lead, I mostly lead meetings. That's probably why. <laughs> so I'm the one who has to like say, do this, do this, do this. Me too. But there's a lot when, when it's a big room and people like talking, you just let it. <laughs> that's mad. That's mad. I, yeah. I wish I uh, yeah. kind of envy that, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, just so um, you guys are listening, keep the yeah. fucking beaches, the beaches on a team <laughs> call right now. So that's cool. That's actually great. How many people on the call? Look. <laughs> that's amazing. Anyway, thank you. Thank you for joining. I'm, I'm really, I'm Dad, really stoked. I'm so glad we could be chatting it. We to almost you, moved today. We almost, we almost moved it. We yeah. almost canceled it. Yeah. I was worried about um, no. your timing. All good here. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave that in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna send this to whoever the hell's on that call. That's hilarious. Um, so for those of you who don't know Beach, Beach is one of the most, I'd say honestly, one of the most creative people I know. You're, you always make an incredible impression with people when you walk in the room. That's one thing that I love so much about you is that kind of. You you have a commanding presence, even though you're not boisterous or out. You know you're not you're not a dick. Oh, it's gonna be a long you have a, podcast. Do you know what I mean? Like you have like at, what's the time? At <laughs> half past twelve, <laughs> using boisterous. Bro, yes. my, we gotta, we gotta, gotta get our vocabulary up, bro. <laughs> you you have this like energy about you, which is just so kind of uh, it's intoxicating, and people kind of are drawn to you, which is so admirable. Um, Beach is a, a stand-up comedian, MC, presenter. You're. Uh, a, 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 creative writer you're a kind of a creative strategist i would say as well creative Is director there? you're all things creative and you're kind of brilliant at every, almost everything that you do so um, but i think most importantly you're an amazing person and um i've always enjoyed our friendship and i've you know i've always learned so much from you when we're around and i'm glad that we're actually getting a chance to talk <laughs> to, have, to have people listen because like i think you have a lot of great uh like kind of knowledge and insight to share so I'm going to try and pick your brain. I'm humble, bro. Jeez, <laughs> I'm very, I'm feeling boisterous. <laughs> <laughs> nah, thank you so much, bro. I'm excited to be here. I'm, I'm excited to delve deep yeah. into the conversation. Did you hear? Delve. Yeah. I delve, pulled it bro, out. We got some vocab. Boy, I've been reading, eh? I watch all my favorite series with subtitles now. <laughs> I'm killing two birds, one stone, bro. Thank you so much, guys. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that's amazing i can't even believe that <laughs> what do you mean i've never i've never you know I, I guess i just have to be on the call i have to be engaging i don't know no, that was that's engagement, mad. bro. that's that mad, was mad hella mad. engagement bro that was you know that was that's engagement, so ridiculous <laughs> you you spoke briefly about how we met and we can touch on that because yeah, yeah, i think sure. it's a really interesting kind of uh progression in your career i feel like we've got the one thing like one thing that we have in common is that we both kind of pursue what we want to do yeah yeah. we're not sure. kind of like held back by what we're supposed to do or what people kind of you're going to kind of get put into a box yeah, yeah, yeah. and i think you've, you've kind of broken out of that box and many others yeah, yeah, uh, you know yeah. along the way as well just speak yeah. about that a bit like about yeah. how you started and jeez bro so you, you can imagine bro coming from durban dog, like coastal city it's we know what we know and what you know tends to be the be all end all when you're a Durban, you know what I'm saying? You get your you get your money, how you get your money, you do what you do. At most you're doubling into two things and that's you're comfortable. Like the city doesn't demand much. It's very laid back. So it it really doesn't push until you leave and then you come back and you go, oh man. <laughs> the world is a very big place. So we obviously met, I was working at the um, Factory Cafe mm. slash Colombo at mm. the time, right? Um, so I'm doing comedy and I'm running a coffee shop content my heart was spilling over mm. spill i look at the money i was making then and i look at the like some of the stuff that i've been doing now it's not a fine but i'm like yo to think i was content with that mm. and i was like do you know what i'm saying and then i go Ooh, the, like i said the world is a very big place so i'm running the coffee shop i'm doing comedy i've been fortunate enough to my rise in comedy was very quick in durban you know and i was like oh and there's nothing I hate personally. That's a good like, indicator. Yeah, right? I was like, ooh, I was like, ooh, there's nothing I hate like being a local champ. Yeah. I, I love you. comfort, but also being a local champ becomes then challenging. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then, because you grow in something so quickly, same thing started happening in the coffee industry. It's a weird thing. Don't, don't become the best, but you become the go-to guy, which I feel like are two different things that 
that tend to happen. You need to know the type of person you are. Some people st strive to be the best and I go, being the best is great. Maybe you're not called to be the best mm. in something, but you're called to be a spokesperson or the person in France. Leave, leave the people with the know-how to do it. They're better baristas, but I could have the knowledge to speak on their behalf. You know what I'm saying? I think you'd also be prone to this. Like, they are great creatives who are well-learned, more than you, but your articulation and your purpose in the gap and in the game plays a more significant role mm. than than the smart guys who can paint and, and make the pictures pretty. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So same thing tend to happen even in the coffee industry. I'm like, yo, there are great baristas out there. But you know what? But because I had the knack of comedy, people skills, and I guess the yeah, characteristic sure. that I, that I, I mean, it, I, I, I didn't ask for it. It just, it comes naturally. I, it always shocks me when people tell me because I just, I wake up and I do me. Mm. And people go, like what you said now, I'm just listening. I'm going, oh, that's crazy. Because I don't think of myself in that light. I just do me the only way I know how to do me. And then people are like, hey, we like the coffee, but we don't only come here for the coffee now. Now we come here for the vibe because we want to crack jokes. I remember, bro, like we went from 100%. like, you know what I'm saying? We went but, from like but, single but, digits. Yeah, but back then, like we were, I would argue that like the way that we were most kind of creatives or yeah. a lot of students were kind of working, we yeah. were kind of operating was from coffee shops, yeah. doing their work. And yeah. it was a community. The yeah, coffee yeah. was like oh, genuinely secondary. like secondary. <laughs> so, yeah. so I think that's what, yeah. what people were so drawn to you by, because, you know, you're able yeah. to pull people and make make them feel heard and and... Yeah, just kind of make an impact. Yeah, and I didn't know that back then, and I've learned it now along my journey. You know, it's someone said something so deep to me, and it stuck. It's like we don't go to places for the products; we go for the people. I can get coffee anywhere. I can get clothes anywhere. I can buy a car anywhere. Mm. But I always go back to the salesperson. I go back to the manager. I go back to the barista. That's that's the vibe. Because when you make something feel like home, because so many of us leave home to go find homes elsewhere. So we get gravitated to anything that feels like home. And it's not a matter of skin color, it's not a matter of ethnicity, racial group, identity, like it's not a matter of that. It's like, it feels like home, or rather it's. Yeah. Cause if you think about where the factory was, Umbilo. Broski. My, bro <laughs> my brother, <laughs> you, you leave every day not knowing whether you still got a window <laughs> on your car or not. You know what I'm saying? It sounds crazy, but you're willing to travel yeah, for a place that feels like, bizarre, hey? you know what I'm saying? You're willing to travel. So many, bro, you had green bean in Glenwood. Yeah. You yeah. had, yeah, well, yeah. you, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We can argue the standard when you're a connoisseur or not, but what the point that I'm trying to drive home is that place that feels like home. Mm. And I guess we're going to get deeper into it as well as we continue with the conversation. But the most important thing is understanding that people don't come or go to a place, even as a creative, they don't come for the product. Mm. They come for the person. You understand what I'm saying? Well, well, even when you get into creativity, I'm sure when you, with some mm -hmm. of the business deals, there's been people who are more qualified than you in the room. Like uh, people are going to go all, with you. All, literally all the time. Yeah. I like when I'm the stupidest person. Yeah. Then. Like it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good feeling. Like, yeah. Like yesterday we hosted the a Think Story meetup. Yeah. And um, there were some very clever people. There were some dumbasses, <laughs> but there were some very clever people. <laughs> and it was, it was really nice to hear a lot of people's perspective. Yeah. So that was cool. Did but I miss the intro of this podcast, by the way? Let me just pause it. I'll there. just, I'll do, I'll do one. No, but I want to, I want to do it in like the radio voice. When I see a mic, I just do it. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, do, <laughs> you do, you do one. You do one. <laughs> okay. Well, you do one. Welcome to the State of Creation podcast with Matt Masson featuring Beachbody. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Everything Creative, The Non-Thinkers, The Troublemakers, <laughs> The Mavericks, and everything else that rhymes with Mavericks. Did you, did you hear the change? Did you, did you hear the switch up? <laughs> Matt, come on, bro. It's, a, it's an art, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, there's obviously a level of like skill and practice and, and kind of uh, that you've put into to be able to Bro, and like, I mean, you've done voiceovers for tons of different yeah. companies, and I wonder in, in how many ads and kind of voice, like voices yeah. we've, we've heard that's actually that been you <laughs> that I didn't even know. Like, I'd be so interested to know because it's different with it with a yeah. ad, you know, like you're yeah, on that sure. that SA twenty, yeah, it's SA twenty, yeah, the cricket, yeah, yeah, and I'm like, Roski, there's my boy. <laughs> I was just like, I was sitting with like yeah. Amy Spokes, and I was like. What the hell is Beach doing on TV? And he's like, <laughs> it was also like the perfect ad for you though. Like, yeah. oh my days. Like, like, how do we make this guy look like the Prince of Persia 300, yeah. but Mzansi edition? Yeah. They're literally. <laughs> they're literally. Yeah. Um, yeah, bro. I think, I mean, you, 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 the intro that you gave, I mean, to be honest, comedy opened the door for all these things for me because that's the one thing that comes to me naturally. Everything that I'm doing now, 
and I and I applaud that you see the the work and the craftsmanship that I put into it. It didn't it didn't come from an educational background. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. Most of the things that I'm doing, I was I'm not supposed to be in the rooms that I'm in. Mm. Typically, I'm not supposed to be. I wanted to be a voiceover artist for so long. The voice just wasn't allowing. It was, there was a point where they would just for put real? me, yeah, yeah. They would put me in the pool and go, go. And then you'll just hear people laughing. I was like, nah, I can't, for real? Can't, yeah. Wow. Like, and it wasn't a, cause it was, we got to a point where it felt like family. It didn't, it didn't kill the thing. I just knew where I had to brush up. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, I always right, tell people right, the right. coin has two sides. I mean, they were laughing on the one side, but on the other side, they're going, we'll always be here if you really want it, but I can't want it for you. You need to go and do it. And then one day those calls just started coming. I'm not on voice bank. I'm mm. not on, you know, there's many platforms that are there to put your voice. I just get calls like, you're the voice that we're looking for. And I go, where did you? Mm. And I go, what's the campaign? They're like, yeah, Coca-Cola, Africa and mm. Sub-Saharan. I'm like, South Africa and Sub-Saharan? Okay, yeah, let's go. Then they're like, Zulu. You know, and I'm like, yeah, do you understand what mm. I'm saying? It's same thing with these ads, same thing like even how I got into modeling. It's mm. like, I'm not your typical model, just like, like, yeah, you might not do like the Fabiani stuff, but we've got a market for you in Europe. And I go, damn. So everything, even with advertising, I just mm. do comedy, I was doing coffee, I meet Napster. He goes, yo, I'm having my DVD launch. If you're keen to come up, come up. I was like, bro, I'll fly myself. Just accommodate me. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because there's always ideal self in your head. We all live in the ideal and then there's the reality. So sometimes you tend to, if you learn, you must learn to pull yourself out of ideal and look at reality and go, whenever you're bargaining, that's the best way to look at it. Because you go, yeah, hey, I'm dope. I can, I can make people laugh. But my experience for the room that I'm about to go to, which I've never done, I need to pull myself out of ideal mm. and mix ideal with reality and go, how's the best way to do this? All right, cool. I gave myself there, but accommodate me because it's still my craft and for it's still sure, my yeah. work. Yeah. Let's meet each other halfway until I prove myself that I can do it. Yeah. Charge, I'll charge you X amount for the first rodeo so I can get into the room and show you that I can do it. But when I'm done there, I believe me, you're going to call me back and we're not talking the same because I told you up front, it's not going to be the same price. But to kind of get my foot in, but it must be something that's comfortable for me and you. And I mustn't shoot myself in the foot. Yeah. You know what I'm so, saying? So just to ask about that, yeah. a lot of young creatives are <clears throat> are kind of struggling with that kind mm. of concept of, do I work for free so that I can get some work? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I've experienced this so many times, yeah. like a couple of times in my career, people mm -hmm. saying like, you know, would, do you want to, you know, how about you do this and we'll, we'll, Next time we have some money or budget, we'll mm. uh, hook up yeah. with you and work and, and do some make something happen. And it's like, mm. how do you get? How do you discern whether there's an actual like an actual potential for a relationship in your cre in creative like business and creative endeavors mm -hmm. versus when someone's just trying to kind of use you? I mean, let's 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 be frank and honest. Uh, the people who tend to call you back are usually like your close circles. Or your friends in the industry when you've got new clients i hate to put it like this it's a the free thing is where the problem starts you'd rather charge a very small amount to go we both yeah felt like we were yeah we felt the pain at the end of this negotiation that's a good negotiation where i sit and go Whew. and you also sit as a client and go damn okay cool we had a, we had a 50 50 because what, what tends to happen is if you're going to call me and go yo can you do this thing for free and then when there's budget, we're going to call you. Whenever there's money, you call people who are more proficient according to you or the people that you are a fan of in yeah. terms of their work because now you've got the money to pay for the. You look at the industry, it doesn't matter what you go. If you look at football, most of these Arabic countries who are buying your Christianos are not so much for the skill. It's like, yeah, we're going to pay you so much money yeah. so we can bring you here yeah. and then you're going to come and sit and have dinner with us. I'm like, dog, I'm paying you the money. So I've got access to you. I can go to my friends and go, yo, that's my boy. You know what I'm saying? Same thing happens in voiceover, uh, the voiceover industry. Like, yeah, the people are good at what they do, but it's like, how do I get a celebrity into a room right. so we can take a photo and I can have their number? Because at the end of the day, no matter your title, someone is always 
geeking over someone because of whether they work or whether they're a fan or whether they... So when you've got the budget and the money, I'm not going to call the guy back that mm -hmm. did something for me for free. See, that's the conflict that most people you, deal you, with. You, you know what I'm saying? Mm. I was like, yo, you do something for free, there's a one point three percent chance that you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. they're gonna call you back. Oh, let ten percent chance. The other ninety percent when the money's there, man, they're cash call, is king. Yeah, they're, they're gonna, gonna put it on the someone. table and go. Yeah. Hmm. That guy. That it's like, yeah, man. We've we've done it. You've already done it. What else are you gonna? Yeah. So, <laughs> like, I wish that I'd heard what I'm about to say when I was 21 because it was just, it genuinely would have. If I had just taken myself seriously enough to treat myself with enough respect to position myself in the market that I was trying to serve with the kind of confidence that I see myself that I have right now for myself, I would have got jobs that I would have, I would have, I would actually be so much further in my career because I would have stood up to people so that you're not worth it. Because if you have a client and they're looking at you, you, it's very, it's really quite easy to position yourself in such a way with the client. So when they see you, they can say, look, this guy looks legit. Like, and you don't actually need to really do too much. Yeah. There's a, there's a, a little bit of a mix that you need to kind of get right. But for the most part, it's not like too difficult to get that kind of brand mix correct so that you can be taken seriously so that you can get those jobs in the yeah. very beginning. But a lot of young creatives don't take themselves seriously. They say, yeah, let me just do this for free. This person will hook me up next time. They say, oh, I'll, yeah, like I, like I need, I need a couple grand to, to pay rent. So let me just undercut myself this month. And I feel like it's actually fairly simple to to get your brand right so that people can take you seriously along the way. And I feel like you've done that really, really well. You've got your brand right mm. as a person, as a, as a human, your personal brand, which Thank is, you. it's like, but it's also not fake. So I appreciate that, bro. a lot of young creatives will, will try and put on a fancy shirt or they'll try and, you know, dress a certain way or speak a certain way or try and yeah. fit in with a certain group of people so that they can be seen. Yeah. And, and, but you've, you've honestly, you've just been yourself. You've never really yeah. done anything like that. And I've done stuff like that. Yeah. I've tried to fit in with specific people so I can get, you know, noticed. Yeah. And and uh, I've put on the fancy shirts in some mm -hmm. business meetings when I'm like, bro, I'd like, I just should just rock up as myself. Yeah. And and the more I've been myself, the more successful I've been. For sure. But for you, that's been your whole life. Yeah. I've, I, you've never faked it. I have. Yeah. I've faked it several times to try and to, to make myself feel confident. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But it felt like you've just naturally been gifted in that area. Yeah. I mean, it, it came, and I appreciate the fact that you noticed that. And that's like I said, that the only version I know how to be is myself. You know what I'm saying? But I made that decision knowing that there's going to be times that I'm going to be hungry because of that mentality, which is a reality. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because hunger is not from the point of they don't want to give me business. But it also comes from the from my personal point of view going, it's not the right fit. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let me go two months without eating, per se, business wise. Yeah. Because I know this is not the right fit. You know what I'm saying? And I always tell people, and I've learned it along the way, it's for me to give you my best version, I need to be comfortable in who I am first. So once you put me in a college shirt and a pointy formal shoe, yeah, you've yeah. lost. Yeah. You've lost I don't even feel comfortable in my own skin. You think I'm gonna walk into a room and sell you something? Bro, I, my, my cadence is gone. Mm. I, in myself, I'm gonna walk. Uh, uh, um, uh, <clears throat> so, uh, no, so my, it's like, mm. nah, dog, let me, you're not, you didn't hire me for my, the color of my socks. You hired me for my mind, right? Mm. If you didn't hire me for my mind, you, you hired me for my execution, because I get the job done. It's literally input mm. and output. How we get there is highly, this doesn't matter. highly, Irrelevant whether you use chat GPT or you write it on pick my brother it just doesn't judge matter. me on the standard of work mm. Don't judge me on appearance, which is you touched on a very Important thing which is even if you look at the Maisons and the luxury brands around the world Things are starting to change because the consumer Is no longer that he needs to wear a suit for me to take them seriously it's like mm. The guy in shorts and sandals now yeah, as a can, it, My brother yeah Living in case on to show me the wildest mm. things in life. Mm. The guys without the cat, you saw it the last summer there. 
all have taken up the VIP seats with the sparkles and whatnot, the billionaire in shorts with the beer in their hands. Because yeah. you go, when you work for every dollar or every rand or every euro, whatever it is, when you work for your money, you understand the importance of it. And I, I, I watched something the other day where you go, there's such a thing where you, where you out, outdo and outgrow luxury. So what does that mean when you break it down? Is a, There's a point where you get to where you go, I can afford a Ferrari. So you buy a Ferrari. You're living within luxury. When you outgrow and outdo luxury, you go, I can buy the Ferrari franchise. So I really don't need to buy a Ferrari. Because nothing you're going to tell me or tell me that I'm going to make, because my brother, I can buy the franchise. So I really don't need that thing. Do you understand you, yeah. what I'm saying? It's like, that's the price tag of that thing. I need to outgrow that level so that when, because human beings are always like that. But you, I guess you're referring to more than just a specific, like, like an ex, like a luxury expense. Yeah, this, this life. is this is life. Life. You know, this is a life lesson. Like Clients, it's everything. When you go, great. It's gonna be great on the resume, mm -hmm. but money is no longer the thing that makes me tick. Mm -hmm. My livelihood, my well-being, how I function with people. Mm -hmm. Look, just to bring that back to. Yeah the kind of the creative mm. trying to be real yeah. and and i think it's it's a really good lesson because if we if we can objectively look at where we are and say i'm i can be confident in myself i can feel confident in myself i don't need to be look act uh think you know i don't have to be something that i'm not mm -hmm. in order to in order to be successful Successful. and to to make an impact with people yeah i think that if we can more effectively do that and i need to do i, I need yeah. to do that more you know that's something that you do very well it's, you don't really have to you don't really mm -hmm. try be anyone other than yourself like yeah. like i found myself kind of being trying to fit into a specific kind of framework a client meeting, I have to be a specific way. And I kind of censor myself. Yeah. I almost also kind of sometimes censor my creative thoughts. Yeah. Um, because I don't, to please I, I don't want to offend be too it. much. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And, um, yeah, some, some, you know, th so that's just something that I've, I've always admired with, with you. You've, you've always been able to be 100% real. I appreciate um, that. But bro. you also do it in such a way where it gets you, and this is what I kind of wanted to mm. chat to you about this. It gets you into, you're able to get into rooms that a lot of young creatives are just literally mm. dreaming to get into. Yeah. Speaking to big ad execs and, and mm. speaking to uh, marketers and, and, yeah. and people who are very established with 10, 20, 30 years yeah. experience, people who are almost deciding what we hear and yeah. see in this country. Yeah. And, you're help. You're able to sit with those people in a room and, and decide what's put out mm. and and discuss those things. Yeah. And it's just such a, I know for, for a lot of like you know, visual creatives, I yeah. think we are are dying to know mm. how can we, how can we position ourselves in such a way that it makes it easier for us to get in rooms with people that yeah. we really want to be in room. We want to do jobs that we want to work with Nike. We want to work with with Coca Cola. Yeah. You know, we want to be able to do these kind of projects that yeah. are bigger that do that that are really that look fantastic on a cv mm. that that really make a kind of a a, a bigger impact than the mm. kind of smbs that we work with typically yeah. like what how did you get there you know and how yeah. how did you get there like yeah. it's just and there's no obviously there's no easy answer yeah. but it's it's like it, it's i think that you have some insight to share on that yeah. for, for the younger she, she had, for sure, I, I'll share what I, what I know. I, I've been, honestly, I sit and I look back and I go, I've been, I am and I've been very privileged to be in, in certain rooms, like I said, that I should not be in. But uh, it all boils down to asking yourself one question. Would you believe or buy into yourself? It's like before going to a relationship, would you date yourself? If you say no, then you know what you need to work on, right? So before you walk into these rooms, before you meet these people, mm. am I someone that I would want to talk to if I was running an ad agency, if I was a brand manager at Nike, if I was? What am I doing 
to walk into a room that, and because I've taken time to know myself, I can only speak on my personal experience, to know myself and work on myself and truly stick to my authenticity, right? Whether it's the different socks or wearing Crocs or what, it, it's, I'm not doing it for cool, I'm doing it for me. So when I walk into the room, they usually get me into the room because of my thinking and why I've chosen to go a certain direction, right? So that's my foot into the room. For you, it might be something else. For, but ask yourself, what am I offering before going? If I'm offering nothing and I'm, I'm the same as everyone else, my brother, then we're going to call the fourth guy. Do you understand what I'm saying? What are you selling that's not in the market? Mm. What is your USP? What's yeah, your unique selling yeah. points, right? I knew my unique selling is just my authenticity. Mm. Not, I don't claim to be the smartest. I don't claim to be the coolest. So when people go cool, I go, no, my friend. Yeah. I just authentic. Because real cool, cool is like a trend. It comes and goes and it keeps changing. But authenticity, bro, stays the same. Whether yeah. you apply it in business, whether you apply it as a creative as a creative, work on yourself, bro. Stop. Stop. Like I said, money's good, bro. But just take a step back and go, what is my story? What's my why? When I meet Matt, bro, there's many creatives you can call, but there's a reason why you call me. Because you go, man, I just I need to go. Tap into the why does this guy think like this? Mm. Or why does he talk the way he talks? Dude, it's your substance and what you have to offer is the only thing that gets into the room, bro. My first, my first advertising gig, never done advertising in my life. Land in Joburg, 2016. I'm on the ANC campaign. What? I know nothing. Bro, you must understand I'm coming from a place of just like, I'm looking at politics going, bro, I'm just, mm. come on. I'm just doing my own life, whatever. Get a job, you're like, yeah, welcome. Not the deep end, we're gonna throw you in the ocean. It's not telecoms. It's not an easy it? campaign. No, to be my a brother. Product, bro. No. Whether you believe in it or you don't, or you fall apart, it's your first gig in an in not a job, in an industry you've never done before. Mm. Come. We'll give you the most complicated, most always on campaign. It didn't ask you whether, like I said, you are you for, who do you? You are now the writer here and you go, okay, I'm on week three and I'm now with the president. Mm. What am I going to say to this guy? What mm. do I know about politics? To me, so all I know is creativity. You know communication. Yeah, I know communication. I know creativity. I know what's going to be cool and I know what's going to resonate to the market that I can speak to. Because you said it again. I always tell people, look at my personal brand before you hire me to do anything to your brand. If you're liking what I'm doing in my personal, then you're going to like what I'm going to do with your brand. Yeah. If there's no correlation then because that's my strength right mm -hmm. my personal brand is my strength it's the people who are following you the quality if you go into my followers i've got so many friends it's like some are verified some are not verified some are ecd some are md some are ceos and i go because you create that relationship with those people and they buy into me as a personal brand. that's why they can form me for their yeah. stuff and their companies because they go we mess with you on a personal level we definitely can mess we just want you to take this replicated on our business. Mm -hmm. You can't be this. And then when I get to a room, I'm like, yo, so like, as I was saying, yeah, yeah, like, no, 100%. and that's what happens, which yeah. is what you're touching on. Forget it. Work on your personal. We're going to hire you for your personal mm. to come and replicate in business. Because the business is at some level a personal for someone. Well, I would argue that business is personal. It's, it's always going to be because yeah. we're a bunch of humans working together as humans. And we aren't, you know, we're, we're not, like I'm not a business. Yeah. Like I, I can have, I can consider myself a business, but yeah. at the end of the day, I'm still a human being. So we still need to relate to people on a on a human personal level. You know what so, I'm you know, I, I get that. I just think that <clears throat> it's there's a level of self awareness that you need to have in order to build that. That I think a lot of people don't really, not to be mean, mm. but like a lot of people don't really have that self awareness. Yeah. Some people will think. You know, I'm great at design. Yeah. I'm, I'm a great designer. I'm a great photographer. Bro, some of these TikToks yeah. and, and Instagram Ideal. things, and they're posting these photos, and, and it's just, it's such a, it's so bad. Yeah. But they're so, but the, it's not, it's not, I'm sorry, let me just rephrase that, because I don't think that it's bad to share stuff that you're mm -hmm. learning mm -hmm. when you're learning. But when people's like perception of themselves is so false, um, and they think that they're like a god. Yeah of a specific discipline, 
there's a level of self-awareness that is yeah. missing and I don't think that that's very good. Yeah. Um, I think it's good to learn and grow and to push yourself and, and develop, but yeah. I don't think it's a good, I don't think it's good to really think of yourself as, you know, like there, I have certain weaknesses, mm -hmm. like things that I'm not very good at, but yeah. I really want to get better at. Yeah. Um, I have a, like a, it's a reasonable proficiency in yeah. certain areas of my creative career. Yeah. But, but I know my limitations. Yeah. I, 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 there's a level of self-awareness there that I think is helpful. Yeah. And you, you kind of touched on that a little yeah. bit. But how, I mean, like in your experience, how have you been, have you always been self-aware? Have you always been very analytical of your own thoughts and, and mind and, mm -hmm. and, and what you're, what you're putting out mm -hmm. or your strengths and weaknesses? Yeah. Or maybe like, how can we help people who are listening yeah. get to the point where they're able to sit down and draw and mm -hmm. write out all of their strengths all yeah. of their weaknesses and kind of develop a bit of a plan to help them actually get better at the things that they're struggling with bro it's such a it's such a dope question um always be willing to be a student always be a student it's it's a simple logic of when you look like you have money i'm not gonna call you because i go Dog, you're doing just fine. Why would I call you to come and do anything in my business? You're doing just fine. Dog, carry on. But when you always have a student approach, like I said, I hit the ceiling very quickly in Durban. But I didn't carry myself. Like, like God. No. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I knew I was like, the world is a very big place. I've hit a ceiling in Durban, but I'm still going to go out there and do the gigs. I'm still going to talk to the people. I'm still going to come. This is my community. These are mm -hmm. my people. You know what I'm saying? Both on the fan side and on the comedian side. Mm. Doesn't matter where I'm going. Doesn't matter how quick I've progressed. The open mics that I'm introducing to the game versus the veterans that I chill in the room with, I treat them both equally and I learn from both sides. You know what I'm saying? Some of the dopest leaders are the ones that are always learning. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've been in certain spaces where technically by title, you're a leader, but I go, I forget the title, bro. Throw, throw that thing. I don't, I don't like titles, but that thing, one side. Let's get the job done, but always be a student. And like you said, it's these platforms that are out here now, because I've got access to DM a photographer in, in the US and we're talking and it's like, yeah, hey, I'm a photographer from South Africa, killing it. Cause you've put like an edit and you, you forget the basics. Like you said, it's a, some, something's come with time and time not necessarily 10, 15 years, but something's come with time. But when you're a student, you can always DM someone and go, your dog, love your work. But if you can just work on this. You see, you remember how you used to do that course about the F, the F stops, put that on this and to create this portrait that looks, mm. the, you can tell that you've taken time to know your craft, but you don't come back and tell people how dope you are. That's the biggest thing that's happening to, to your point. Actually, let's practicalize this. The biggest thing that's happening right now is with LeBron and Michael Jordan is everyone's going, yeah, LeBron, you're dope, bro, you're great. The only issue is that you told us that you're the greatest of all time. With Michael, we told him mm -hmm. that he's the greatest of all time. So now, no matter how dope you are, because you've told me that's what you are, I go, all right, cool. Then you're leaving no room for me to make my own assessment. Because mm -hmm. you keep walking in and telling us, I'm not disputing, like you said, that you can take photos, that your TikTok is booming, that you're verified. But my G, Greatness comes from external. It doesn't come from internal self-praise. You, you, you it's know, an yeah, it's an yeah. external validation. Greatness belongs to you. Like, yo, I want to be great. I need to know that. Like, yo, yeah, each, yeah, for sure. every day I wake up, dog, I'm going to be the dopest and greatest at what I do. But it's not my job to go out there and go, yo, comedy. So, okay. So that's, it's an interesting thing is how do we then balance? How do, how do we then balance the marketing yourself? which is can be seen as kind of self kind of kind of gloating yeah. at, at times how do we balance the marketing yourself with staying humble yeah. you know it's a tricky it's a tricky yeah. balance balancing act to yeah. get right so so it's not necessarily about the gloating it's how you gloat right and that's the trick if i if you want to hire me a thing story and you go, okay, Beach, we've seen your CV, whatever, whatever. Tell us about yourself. 
I can tell you about myself. And based on how I'm telling you, you're going to be able to draw that line like, yo, this guy's got a big head. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Like, yo, dog, I've been doing this thing now for 10 years, being presidents, celebrities, you name it, across the world, DJs, my brother. Yeah. There's nothing. Or, same question, it can come and go, my brother. My strengths are, there's one thing I know, it's consumer insights, right? I'm with the consumer, I'm on the ground, I am the consumer. I play in different spaces, which gives me the edge amongst other creatives because they are dope, but they, they don't have the, the fortunate lifestyle of being on the ground because they are, they are in nine to fives, which is great. And they're, they are better creatives than me. I'm just on the ground with the people. So when it comes to human insights, consumer insights, that's my strength. Mm-hmm. Now, based on how I shape my conversation about the same question about tell us about yourself, you can only draw the true difference. I'm telling you, dog, I, I, the streets, bro, mm. untouchable. But I'm not going to tell you, <laughs> untouchable. I'm telling you stuff based on facts that I've done, based on these campaigns. So this is the campaign that I did. This was the outcome. Because this is how I pulled myself and you go, all right, cool, bro. Yeah. So it's how you gloat. Because you need to be confident. It's a fine line between confidence yeah, and, arrogance. and arrogance, right? I can walk and you go, and you always, it's the people that never oversell. And it comes with experience. You're like, walking, dog, this is what we do. Like, you remember everything you're telling me in the office? Like, dog, we're going leaner. We're focusing on this. We've closed all the other things. This is what we do. And I yeah, go, yeah, yeah. this man is not easy. Confidence in what you do. This is what I do, bro. This is how much it costs. Thank you. Are we going to do business? Are we not going to do business? Thank you so much. Mm. I hope in the future we can work versus, nah, dog, you're not worth my time. I'm out. And it's like, mm. <laughs> cool, bro. We Coca-Cola. <laughs> how many, we don't need you. Yeah. How yeah. many times can you walk out versus... Thanks, Coca-Cola. I don't think we're a perfect fit. But should you find something based on the information I've given you, please give me a call. Yeah. <clears throat> For me, I feel like... So so we've kind of changed... I've kind of changed everything about how I handle business mm. meetings now. Yeah. And it's been the best thing. It's been... The, I, I essentially go into every Put meeting... Put us on, bro. Yeah, I, yeah. I essentially go into every meeting trying to convince the client not to work with yeah. with not to work with us and it's the best thing in the world come on it's um oh man i'm gonna kick myself if i mm. i have to google this otherwise i'm google. gonna i'm yeah, gonna yeah, be yeah. bleak it's called the why conversation the the why conversation why yeah like simon sinek why uh yeah simon sinek okay. but it's guy his name is jonathan stark mm-hmm. and he speaks it's a he speaks a lot about uh kind of how to price yourself, yeah. how to get clients. And it's essentially this why conversation talks about how to essentially mm-hmm. convince the client not to work with you. Yeah. So the, the three whys that he asks is why, why this? Mm-hmm. Why do you want to do this specific project? Why mm-hmm. is this important right now? Why now? Mm-hmm. Why is this an urgent thing? Mm-hmm. Why is there a ti- what is the timeline? Mm-hmm. What is the importance of mm-hmm. this right now? And why me or why us? Mm-hmm. Why do you think that it, you, why, why are we speaking? Because you know that we're expensive. You know yeah. that we're going to cost a lot of money. Mm. You know that we, you obviously, have, you've probably tried to do this, but you can't do this yourself. So you need someone to do it right because, and you need someone to do it right first time mm-hmm. because of the timeline we just established. And because, you know, we we know that this is an urgent specific project that you need. Yeah. So, it, it, but, I, but basically I'm just going into every meeting yeah. trying to, and, and that's a good tactic, yeah. but our strategy is, to be the helper yeah to be the guide the person who mm. and and this is different self-promotion mm. this is different self-promotion we're not promoting ourselves mm-hmm. as the hero of yeah. the story we're speaking to the client enabler and and we're the helper we're the the, the client i did a meeting two days ago i'm just I actually have to finish the present mm. the the proposal today and yeah. send it to them but they have, they're, a comp- they're a U.S., they're di- already distributing in the U.S., distributing it in, in Australia and South Africa. South Africa is a bit of a smaller market for them, but they really want to just take this one product that they're selling and just blow it up, right? Mm. And every single question I asked the guy, mm. um, I said, I, I tried to bring it back to them being the hero of course, and trying to constantly say, you know, we're just here mm. to help. We're not like... I, I even started the meeting saying we, we might not work together. Mm. We might leave this room and have nothing to do with each other after this. But I'm going to do my best yeah. to help you get 
find the solution that mm-hmm. will help you sell this product yeah. to as many people as you can, yeah. to help you really impact the yeah. communities around you. I'm just your, your helper. Yeah. I'm just your guide. Yeah. I'm just here to help you get there. I've done this before. That's so fire. Do you know what I mean? So it's it's not saying, I'll sell your products. I'll, I'll turn your brand around. I'll fix everything about your brand. Nah. It's saying, how can we fix your brand? How can we help you fix your brand? Yeah. How can we help you make this change? How can yeah. we help you adjust your brand identity? Or yeah. how can we help you kind of reach more people with sales? Yeah. It's, it's about the self-promotion aspect should be about humbling yourself to a point of, to a position of the guide yeah. or the problem solver yeah. and positioning your client as yeah. the hero because they're speaking to a bunch of other creatives yeah. who are positioning themselves as heroes and they don't want a competitor here. Mm-mm. They want a helper. Yeah. That's what every Mm -hmm. hero wants in every single story we've ever read. It's about the hero having a a problem solver to help them solve their problems. Everyone is a Robin. Everybody is a Robin. Everybody. Exactly. I'm just just a Robin, bro. bro. Just a Robin, bro. (laughs) We're going to go to the same place. We're going to see the same things. I'm happy. See, now that, again, is a secret. Knowing your place in society. You know, they say, never be the smartest in the room. They never said, don't be smart. Be smart. Yeah, for sure. Just yeah, don't yeah. never be the smartest in the room. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because I go, no one, no one likes a threat, especially when we're paying you, bro. Because in our interactions, I can pick up that ooh, this guy is smarter than me. This guy is smarter than me, but because I am holding the office and you need work from me, I can know that you're smarter than me, but you still glorify my position. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the meeting, I must be able to walk out and go, okay, here's a guy that I've called in who's smarter than me, but they've created enough of room for me to ask questions and not feel like I'm, I'm stupid. Because mm-hmm. now I said I'm a CEO, right? And think about it. People who sit at the top actually got there because of how smart they were. But when they sit in a certain room, they start, they start operating from a mental capacity perspective and they always got people around them that feed them information. They no longer go out for information. So everyone who's actually around the person at the top is smarter than the person at the top yeah. in for, at an informational level, not at the capacity experience level. The king has mm-hmm. got servants and what's like, yo, go out there, bring me a message, what's happening on the ground, how to. And the person at the top has got great discern- discernment skills they got great decision-making skills. Because it's like, yo, if I say we're going left, most of the time leaders don't know the right answer. But the gut feeling is what separates them from the rest of the table. So what you say when you go, bro, I'm here to glorify you, dog. It's your business. Matt, if you walk into someone's office and tell them, I'm going to... It's like, dog, mm. I hear you, but you're not running this business. What are you going to... You haven't even taken time to ask me what my problems are. Mm-hmm. We had this meeting and you're telling me, it's, yeah, 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 we'll make you trend, we'll make you... And it's like, great, make me trend for what? Yeah. Give me which solutions? We ju- it's our first meeting and you're already giving me solutions. Based on what? Based on what strategy, on what, strategy? Or what research, what have you? what discovery. Nah, nah, so I, did, so I looked up your business online. You guys are, are doing well financially. For, four billion, yeah, that's on Google. That's on Google. Yeah, bro. That's what you... you know, I, actually, hold up, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> you hear me? I saw a little baby... Little baby's net worth was like five million. <laughs> Cause I Google that. I was like, bro's worth more than five million dollars. Like you can't trust that. Like Google, like it's no, ridiculous. Bro. But based on speculation. So, so many people will speculate. And yeah. um I think that the, the one of the biggest the biggest mistakes people can make when when thinking about their customers is yeah. assuming what they assumption. customers assumptions will just kill any sort of project. In anything, even in relationships, bro. You know I like to practicalize things and it's not because it's a deter like a detour or i'm detouring from the it's same with relationship you become too arrogant in our first meet talk we out so nice first for date sure. that's for sure cut but confidence you go i can speak on behalf of women because that's all that's all i would know right you get there and you start getting feedback from women it's like yo what what was it that you found interesting about me or what was it that made you stay longer? What was it? It's like, oh, okay, cool. You didn't have anything in you that seemed desperate. It didn't seem like you were chasing. You knew your, you knew your worth in so the room. Worth, yeah. You knew my worth when I walked in, right? Because I think that's where we miss it. Like, people are out of my league. I'm like, oh, bruh. 
There's yes. people have, who have broken yeah, norms yeah, time and said there's no thing. such thing as a league. Have you taken time, to, again, go back to where we started, have you taken time to work on yourself? Do you know what you bring to the table? Do you know your worth? I didn't come here and say I'm going to give you the world. I'm going to buy Porsches when I buy and I, yo, I run a business. I'm a creative. I work for mine. Mm. I like traveling. Mm. I didn't tell you at what level. I didn't tell you at what level the business. I didn't promise you the world. I said, this is what I'm about. This is what I like. This is who I am. What's your story? Hey, man, it looks like we've got things in common. And yo, hey, so, yo, hey, it's like, nah, my G, we're on the fourth message in two minutes. Nah, mm. we're out. Same thing with clients. It's like, yo, I walked in. This is what I'm about. This is my story. What are you guys about? How can I help? Do you yeah. think the synergy, like you said, ask the question. Do you think the synergy, what's your biggest, what's your biggest problem right now as a business? No, these are our problems. Oh yeah, we solve these problems. I don't think you're like, mm. then they're like, nah, dog. I've been, st I've been stopped. There you go. I know we might not be the, but there's something, dog. We, we can still do work. And that's how different positions and roles and problems of the business come about. I was like, yeah, dog, I was willing to walk out. Not because I'm arrogant, I'm full of myself. I was honest with you. I was like, it's like, yeah, and that's so, that's so, such a good point. I just want to say before you, before we carry on, back to the CEO analogy of having smart people around you, I would argue that for creatives, and I, and I'm, I, I do think that a lot of CEOs have to be creative in a lot of different ways, right? Yeah. But for creatives, I would argue that EQ is more important than IQ. Yeah. And I think that if you can develop your emotional intelligence, as opposed to just focusing mm. on learning mm. uh, or like, you know, trying to be mm. the best photographer. Mm -hmm. Because I think that it, it, emotional intelligence is, it, it also includes forms of communication, right? And the best, the best communicators win. It's mm. not about the best service no. delivery or no. the best, you know, I'm the best yeah. web developer. No. It's about the person who says it can communicate most effectively to the yeah. client and that person will win at the end mm. of the day. That person will get the job. The person who convinced the, yeah. the specific person why they should work with them yeah. or, or help that person see the path yeah. and, and position them as the problem solver. Bro, I love what you're saying. And you, and I don't want people to mistake in this. I'm not saying CEOs are not smart. There's a reason why they're at the mm, top. Mm. I'm saying that people around them tend to be smarter because they need to go collect stuff to deliver to the CEO. You run a business. You're spending so much time doing proposals. You're not, you're not on the ground. You understand what I'm saying? You've only got so much to do research and find out what's happening. Mm. But the reason why you are running a company is exactly everything that you touched on now. See your dog. I do it quicker, faster. My EQ is higher. I've been where you are. I, I will, you will run circles around, that's, that's why the positions, I hate hierarchy, but that's why positions exist. Mm. But you're smart enough to go, I'm gonna get a Kiara to do so, because she can do it quicker, faster, she's yeah. a smart individual, well, me, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you, and you, you're confident enough to go, yo, she's better than me in most things. But when it comes to it, at the end of the day, to move and propel the business further, you the guy they come to, you know what I'm saying? And it's not a smart thing, you guys are smart, in your own capacities yeah, sure. and we need to compliment and respect that mm. i shouldn't be arguing with you and trying to take your position at the throne i should go what does my throne look like because sure. i've also owned a throne for someone else who's looking up to me they own a throne for someone else that's looking up to them how do you best deal with your throne i don't need matt's throne to sit on a throne you you people what i'm saying when people go hey don't you wanna yo bro let the creative director yeah, that's, direct that's let the lead bro let the be the, the CEO, best yeah. You because but you guys are partners. Yeah, we are partners. But I own my throne. I don't need that throne. <laughs> what am I doing with my throne? Should I be called up to sit there? I might even say no. It's not for me. But I'll still be here. I'll st I'll still be here rocking. And you also touched on another thing. It's like it's not the best web de developers that that are usually chosen. I always tell people like some of the wealthiest people in the world are not the ones that are best. At what they do they're the most marketable the most so they always argue now like this thing that goes around example trevor like oh, trevor's not as funny as he used to be when he was here with us and i go you are missing the bigger picture mm. if you have to look at it holistically that is the most market you know as a creative you must be the most marketable brand possible you go guy is funny at which level it doesn't matter he's funny he can take that box 
you put him in an Al Jazeera interview to talk about the current political landscape, he ticks that box. You put him in front of a magazine to sell products, he ticks that box. He's well groomed as well. Doesn't have to be the best looking. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You put him in different spaces, most marketable is what people go for. You don't have to be the best and perfect, but you're the most marketable, which means I get more out of you value-wise as a brand, clothing brand, business, work. Do, do, do you understand? And so much, especially when you're creative and you're coming up, you're focusing on one thing. Yo, I'm a designer. I'm just a hot designer. And it's like, yo, and then when you hit the ceiling of being the hottest designer in the country, where to from there? Because now the world is going to demand more of you. You're 28. You've got all the awards. You've got Cannes. You've got Louis. You've got everything. At 28, what are you doing for the rest of your life? What else are you trying to convince? Be marketable. Be marketable and go, yo, I do design. But I also do this. I'm, do you understand what I'm saying? And it's not a degree thing. You got to be a 360 brand, no matter what that thing looks like for you. If you're a corporate analytical person, be a 360 within corporate. So you go, yo, this person is an engineer by trade, but you put them in supply chain, they will rock it. And then you put them in, in marketing. It doesn't matter the room that you occupy. Be a marketable person within that room and go, because you're going to hit ceilings, bro. Mm. And that's why people's lives go like this with musicians and it's like okay outside of rapping can you hold an intellectual conversation can we make you a sports person i always look at the analogy of a soccer player they've got two lives they've got the life as a footballer and they've got the life afterwards only a few of them go and be, be get a part of the yeah, epl and it's like yo yeah. now i speak as a scholar in the sports if you look at like your michael owens and your yeah, tons, do, do, do you hundreds, understand hundreds, yeah it's yeah. like but we don't have a lot of them here in south africa Mm -hmm. Who can do that? It's after the football season, then it's done. It's like, yo, be a scholar in it's your field. Decent, uh, yeah. On the TV, but I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't don't be the call up once in a while as a, the legend is coming to studio. It's like, be a player, then become a scholar. Yeah. Be a worker, then become the scholar. Be a leader, then become the scholar. Always know that there's levels above what you're doing. Be marketable. Tell me, like, yesterday we, we were chatting and, yeah. and someone was talking about someone in the in the meetup was oh. talking about having to do many things mm -hmm. to to make it to be to be to make a living yeah and i've always i think maybe I'm, i don't know if it's just mm. me I, I spoke to amy on the way home mm. after that event i said look i feel blessed to be able to do as more than just one thing mm -hmm. and a lot of people will look at doing lots of different things or mm. tr you know you know having to do more mm. than just one specific discipline yeah. as a curse yeah where I feel like it's the biggest blessing to me mm. because I feel like I'm never bored. Yeah. I'm never creatively bored. I'm yeah. always challenged. Yeah. And when I when I hit close to the ceiling in one discipline, like for example, photography, I really mm. did hit close to the ceiling of photography, mm. at least in this country. Mm. And I I got bored mm. and I said I need to learn more. Mm. And, you know, I, I wrote down a list the other day of the things that I've learned over the past 10 years, 12 years, yeah. professional, 13 years, I'm flipping old now, bro. 13 <laughs> years, bro. But like, I have wrote a list and it's just, you know, I've always said, let me learn more. Yeah. Which has been the, if I consider what has been a kind of primary driver in yeah. my success, it's genuinely been learning. Yeah. It's not, and it's been learning without reservation yeah. of, of the discipline. Yeah. I've always wanted to try and learn more and yeah. more and more. And that has inevitably yeah. helped me become more marketable. Yeah. Because, you know, because not because I'm saying, so let me just break <laughs> this down. So we, 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 we let's say we're writing a story for a company, a yeah. brand story for a company, and they need full on, everything needs to be messaged out yeah. properly, but they also need to have a website built, right? Yeah. So, We've like I the first website I built I was eighteen. I've since then learned a hell of a lot yeah. about web dev, but I'm not. I'm not. There's there's me and then there's web dev. No, there's people yeah. that are mad, mad. good, yeah. right? And I'm not proclaiming to be there, and I don't even want to be there. But because I understand. A lot of the fundamentals, mm. a lot of the things that the restrictions and limitations, mm. when we're doing the brand story and we're trying to help the client think this through mm. and they're saying, oh, we want to build a website with, 
you know these these specific JavaScript animations, and we want this, this, and this, and this, and I'm able to then also advise them on those specific things because I have an understanding exactly. of a lot of that stuff, and it makes me more marketable mm -hmm. because I have put my my hand in a lot of different pies, and I've been able to learn and grab little pieces yeah. of information, which also makes it very very easy for me to quote. Yeah. Because we have a network of, of creatives that we work with that we contract out. Yeah. So when we do have a massive project, yeah. we, we can do the core stuff on our own. When there's a massive project, we can contract people out. Yeah. And then we can say, look, Martin, you're goat of web dev. Yeah. So we need this site built. This is the like top level, very high level strategy. We haven't even done any major discovery, mm -hmm. but this is what this this is what they're wanting. Mm -hmm. They're wanting these plugins that we've suggested or we've kind of spoken about, or they're wanting this kind of functionality. And he's, we're speaking to him and we're speaking to the client, he's speaking to us. Mm -hmm. We're able to speak two languages in that sense. Yeah. So we're able to speak the client and we're able to speak the deliverer, the, the yeah. contractor, yeah. which makes it so marketable yeah. because you need to have intermediaries yeah. between these people. For sure. If this guy spoke to the client directly, mm. it's late. Yeah. This guy literally dreams in code. Mm. He's just, he's like, and he's proper good. Mm -hmm. But I, I would argue that he's probably not the best at client relations. Yeah. I, like, I, I like the position that being able to learn as many things has put me in because I'm able to speak more than just one language. Yeah. But we, whether we like to believe it or not, we are living in a time where we have to do more than one thing professionally. The term is actually called multi-potentialite. Say again? Multi-potentialite, a.k.a. forward slashes. So I do That's this. Bro, that sounds like a Gen Z thing. No, 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 no. It's actually a, it's 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 actually a multi potentialite. Yeah, okay, it, was okay. a t it was a term coined in New York. So there's a study okay. around it, you know, so forward slashes. I'm a, for, I'm a got you. voiceover artist got you, got you. slash comedian. So, Again, the how questions are so important. It's how am I a multi-potentialite, right? So many people are doing more than one thing professionally, but most of them are getting frustrated because their choice of things that they've put together are things that have nothing to do with each other. You said when you started this thing, You've always been fascinated about how I just navigate through these different industries mm -hmm. the way that I navigate. I told you from the beginning, my main thing has been comedy. That has opened the door for so many things. Strategically, everything that I do is actually the same thing. When I do comedy and I do writing, writing goes into comedy. Because you write, you get insights. When I do insights, it goes into writing comedy. Because that's what you do. You're gathering insights, you're writing. When I do voiceover, it involves the script. I understand how to perform because I'm a writer. I know how to do voices. I know how the, the inflections and the cadence and the, I know how a line must come. And then I know how to add certain tones and lights and shades to make it funnier because I'm a comedian. So everything that I do professionally lends into each other. I'm not an accountant by day, then a guitarist at night, <laughs> and then a photographer on the weekend. It's like, your mind is going to go crazy because yeah. I need to be analytical, then I need to be creative, then I need to be super creative, then I need to come back again to be analytical. But what you're doing is I hit the ceiling in photography. Then I started, I started to go into strategy. And then we went into creative. And then we started developing a 360 where we do strategy, uh, where we do strategy, creative, and output. So we do a 360, a full compelling 360 rollout. You brief us, we give you strats, we give you creative, we give you output. We own the production, we own the creativity, we own the thinking. Because mm -hmm. I've got a relationship with Matt, he understands the process. When I come to Matt and I ask him, I'm not trying to talk to you, then talk to a strategist, then to, those days are gone, bro. Mm. But have a network of people to support you because you're not going to be the best yeah. at all these things. Look, that's the thing. Like it, It's often very useful to have specialists in specific mm -hmm. fields who are able to just supplement mm -hmm. projects. And that's yeah. what we do. Yeah. Because we can't do everything perfectly. No. And it's just not going to be. No. So when we do have a project that does require very specialist yeah. 3D design, you know, I'm mm. not going to, bro, I'm not going to dabble. Like, no. it's just not going to happen. But if I ask you about 3D design, top layer. You know, you can I, tell, yeah, yeah, top layer. Yeah, yeah for like, sure. Yeah. Um, that's actually kind of an area that I'd like to dig into a little bit more because I don't know enough. <laughs> but like if, if someone's, you know, yeah. if, we're, if it's a web development, mm -hmm. like that's just, it's easy for me to help with the communication. Yeah. But 
I'm not a web developer. No. So I'm not going to be the best. No. That's why we have people that we can bring in when we need them. So that they're, we're still able to provide the best service, but there's a, a connection that I think I think a lot of companies, I, I think it's, a, it's actually a, a bit of a USB for us. I don't yeah. think that, I don't think that many companies no. are able to do what we do. No. So, yeah, that's great. Yeah, um, Find, like I said, take, take out from this. Do multiple things that all speak to each other. It's the simplest, most streamless process. Jack of all trade, master of none. It's actually yeah. longer. Yeah. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just wonder what I was Jack of all of. trades is a master of none, yeah. but oftentimes better than a master of one. One. And it's... It is a very good, it's a good phrase. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's interesting how they yeah. just truncated it. Yeah. It, it, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Like, yeah, when you look deeper into things, you go, yeah. ooh. Look, I, I can't imagine, yeah, as a creative who's kind of stimulated by so mm. many different things. Yeah. And I have a, a curiosity for so many yeah. different types of creative development. Yeah. I can't imagine being. One thing, Oof. being bro. a photographer, period. I, I could die. And there's people bro. who love it, but jeez. Yeah, yeah. It's, no, but just for, for me. me. No, but but by all means, more yeah. power to the people who, who love it. More power yeah. to the people who want to be the best at, at one, one yeah. thing. Shout out just, to you it guys. just doesn't work for me. Yeah, I know. And I would argue that it, I know that it's difficult to be that, but if those per, if those people focus heavily and they become the best at that one thing, yeah. they won't have an issue. Yeah. But then they have to triple down. They have yeah. to quadruple down, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. on those things because it it, it is a, it is it's difficult. Yeah. To to it's not you're not as marketable. Yeah. Which is true. I, I guess I'm, I guess we're just blessed yeah. that we're we're Quite we find early. fulfillment fulfillment yeah. in in being able to do yeah. lots of different disciplines. But it's not easy. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because. You have to always be on top of your game. And being on top of the game doesn't mean knowing it all, but you have to be on top of your game, bro. Because you can drop the ball at any moment. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. You need to always keep refreshing your mind about web development. You don't have to be a web developer. Mm. You need to always constantly refresh your mind of like how strategy, because mm. now strategy is now broken up into this creative strategy and there's your normal, typical, strategy. traditional strategy. And you walk into the room and go, yo, I'm a creative strategist. This is the person who does your traditional strategy. going to take your business analytics and bring them in and go cre creatively. I can. We're living in a time where those people need to work together now. Mm. That thing didn't exist before. Knowing finer details like that, like within creativity, breaking it down, going, yo, there's a copywriter and then there's a creative writer. It's like whew. the same way writers itself. Like, yo, I'm a writer, but what? Are you editorial? Are you long form? Or are you short form? Are you copy? Are you? Do you understand what I'm saying? And it's like. My brother, you are, you are going out there having meetings with people about your titles that you've Googled or that you've, based on what you're a photographer, what photographer are you, Doug? Then it's like, uh, 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 photographer. It's like, yeah, but what? <laughs> Do you understand? Then you go, now you've created this whole thing online. You've put, you've sent me an invoice before we've had this conversation that this is how much you charge. This is your, great, love your worth. You can't answer a simple question like what type of, Do you understand what I'm saying? The mm. finer details. Is where people in the room go, this is the guy we work with, or it's like, ah, this guy's taking a chance. They always catch you in the finer details. And you wouldn't know that because you're like, yo, I'm putting my best foot forward. I'm the best at what they do. Here's my invoice. Give me four and a half K an hour. It's like, sure. <laughs> what are we paying four and a half K for? No photography. I work with like the best. Best what? Mm. You know what I'm saying? You can't bullshit your way out of it. No. That's so. You're locked in. It's, boy. Not, it's not going to happen. It's like someone coming to sit with you. You're going to ask them questions and you go, from the second question, you would know whether this is the right fit for you or not. You've mentioned something quickly. We need to wrap soon. Yeah. But we, you mentioned something quickly. Uh, you mentioned per hour, which I find very interesting. Mm -hmm. Because we will never pay anyone per hour. Days are gone. And we will never bill per hour. Days are gone. I will rather be run over by a car than send out a, an hourly invoice. Just because I can do something in 10 minutes mm -hmm. that someone else would take, t you know, 10 hours to mm -hmm. do, and I must be paid, I must be paid per hour. You cooked, bruv. You gotta <laughs> be cooked. That doesn't make any sense. It would be, it's more, it's more valuable for a client to 
have someone efficient and effective mm -hmm. to, to charge a fixed rate, yeah. which makes sense, do the job, get the job done in yeah. two hours. Yeah. You know, do you want me to spend three months on this or do you want me to do it extremely fast and do it in the in the most effective way for your business and and deliver it three months before? Ooh, yeah. You know, like hourly rates as a concept yeah. for creatives. And I just wish that most creatives would do this because when we send out, we, we, we often ask for quotes and we often get back hourly rates. And I'm like, OK, if you're going to give me an hourly rate, what is your... How, what is your production per minute? Mm. Like, bro, what, what kind of metric is an hourly rate? Do you know what I mean? Like, how, how do I know how much, how that long, was... how long this is going to take or how long you, how much time you're going to take to do this yeah. project? Bro, oh my days. We were looking for a video editor the other day. We, Amy and I had just developed a couple small short clips and mm. we wanted to get some like, some kind of like practical, like social clips, just quickly edited. And, and we want to get some kind of real quotes from yeah. people. So we sent this out to a couple of video editors that are in our network and outside that we're trying to like in engage with. What, it's a 60 second clip, social media clip, vlog footage from our phones. Literally, we went to a coffee shop and we sat around laptops and we had a, a pizza and we went, we chilled, we just left, right? So it's very basic, bro, 30, 60 second clip. Guy came back and he said, this is going to cost, I, I don't know what his hourly rate, it doesn't matter. He says, hourly rate is X. And he says, this is going to take about 10 hours to finish. And I was like, you know, do you know what I mean? Like, there's just a, you could have just told me a price mm. instead of me laugh at you yeah. because of how long it takes you to yeah. edit a 60 second video. I was you just like, yourself you in the can't place. be serious, bro. Yeah. So... If, if if these creatives, if a lot of creatives just were, were more confident in analyzing a project and putting together a costing, a fixed costing that factors in any overages, figure out your time, whatever it is, but just present something. And this is something that we've started Oof. to do now because it is so much more effective yeah. to the client. Because when everyone else is quoting hourly, mm. we're saying to the client, why do you want us to quote hourly? We give you X and you'll still... Yeah, if we give you X and we finish it in a week, you'd be happy, yeah. surely. And it's, it's you know... It, we it, factored in everything. We factored in everything. Any overages, we're any of paying, that stress. We're not putting a lime item for your overtime, photographers on the job, editors on... My brother, this is what we're going to supply in the yeah. description. This is how much the... Co we have to wrap, like you said, but costing is a big thing that mm. creators need to learn. Mm. In, in our level, when a client is speaking to a couple of different agencies, they're, they're going to have a couple of different conversations. And my goal is to make our conversation the most memorable and the most impactful for yeah. them. So that, and, and position ourselves in that meeting as the most expensive. Yeah. So that when, we, when they do get, and, and the, they finish the meeting, and they've, again, at the why conversation, they've said, they've told me why they need us mm. already. They've said, yeah, we, need, we really need a, a, a group of people who know what they're doing. We need a team who can actually execute this first time in one week. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, we can do that. But we're not cheap. Yeah. You know, like, can't you do this yourself? Can't you do this, go on Fiverr? Can't you get some Fiverr dude to come do this for you for cheap? Like, and they're like, we really can't afford to do that. We need this done probably the first time. And it's like, okay, cool. Well, I'll send through a quote. It. We'll send through a proposal. But we're not cheap. I'm letting yeah. you know now. So yeah. don't expect a cheap fee. We, we will be pricey. But Oof. because of how we, how we can, yeah. if how we can get you from A to B in the most effective way, it's and you've just told me that you need it. Yeah. it it's a it. great, oh, it's man. such a great strategy. And Jonathan Stark actually talks about it a lot, and he's such a great, he's such a great teacher in this area. And mm -hmm. I've learned so much from him. If if you do want to, yeah, for I, sure, he's got a YouTube channel. It's fantastic. So. And what I love is you've twisted it from one response where we initially how creatives do it. It's first invoice, yo, I'm X amount. By the time you give me with you X amount, I've switched off. By the time you've gone, let's have a conversation. These are my services. What do you need? Oh, you're saying you need me. Why do you need me? Okay. Effective comes. The reason why these high-end cars are this quick and this, they get you to point A faster, but they come at a price, bro. Or you can just go buy a, a Toyota. Yeah, if yeah. That's, if that's your vibe. You, you know what I'm saying? Which is not the... but how you layer the conversations. By the time I get to the price, you yourself, like you said, you've answered your own question and gone, yeah. it's, it's hard to say no. We've actually spoken about 
the need state and how yeah. urgent this yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. They've we, convinced themselves yeah, so they need that, you. Yeah, and they need to pay you, and they now know why. Other people can do it, but they're not going to get it to me in a week. And if they get it to me in a week, it's going to cost me more because it's not going to be efficient. You've mm. got receipts to go, I get it to you a week. Mm. We've done this before. But I didn't, I didn't come here because I want your money. I came here to find out if I'm the right fit for you or yeah. not. Yeah. And if I'm not, but if I am, whew. The first thing, the first that, that why conversation is that that first question is why this? I always try and say, why do you need this thing that you think you need? Mm. And, and, and then I, we go deep. Mm. Like we were talking about like website click metrics. We were talking about the guy was wanting a video. He was wanting a specific video that he could run ads on. And we went, I went so deep. I said, why are you selling to these retailers? Why are you selling three retailers? Why aren't you e-commerce? Yeah. Why, are you doing, why, are you doing D2, um, uh, why aren't you doing D2C when you're selling to businesses? And they're basically an order processor. Mm. Like, what is going on here? And, you know, he's, he's, he, he, I could see him just understanding yeah, that I'm not looking at this like a normal job. No. I'm, I'm looking at this like a... Everything that we need to create needs to feed into the overall yeah. strategy of the business. So if we're building a video, if we, if, we, if we decide that a video is necessary, if, it needs to supplement everything else. I want to understand everything else. And I am the only one that, yeah. he would, that would have gone into all of those yeah. other things to try and... We're, we're, not, we're not selling things. We're not trying to sell a, a video. We're not trying to sell a whatever. Yeah. We're trying to help help a customer, help a client solve their problem. That's, yeah. It's all it is. So sometimes a customer will come in and say, like, yeah, we, we want a website. I'm like, bro, your website's fine. Why do you want, what's wrong? Yeah. They're like, our sales are down. I'm like, well, okay, okay. Issue. That's interesting because that's something we can help yeah. with, but that's not a website. That issue? It's not going to solve your problems. Damn it, we need to get an Instagram page where everyone's on Instagram nowadays. Bro, you sell pipes. You know, you sell, yeah. you sell steel, bro. You don't need an Instagram, Instagram page. page bro. Tell me more. Yeah. Like it's, it's. That's fire, bro. It's people self-diagnose their problems yeah. when they're not true problem solvers, okay. they're business operators and they might not necessarily know how to diagnose the issue. I think if a lot of, if more creators could, in every discipline, yeah. if every discipline could position, think about that before yeah. they get into a meeting, it's just, it'll help, guaranteed. And the takeaway is, the best conversations are always led by questions. Because now you keep asking why I'm going, I actually have not thought this through properly. There's a reason why I actually called you because I thought this is what I needed. You didn't come and convince me that I need this. I'm telling you that I need it. And you go, I hear you. Why? If you could lead more conversations with questions, man, you're going to be invited in every room. Because you're not challenging me we are challenging the problem we have to always bulletproof and walk away going that's how you end up walking out with more than you came in for you came in for a video now you're leaving with more of a thing because you're going so on that note <laughs> so the initial thing was a video yeah and um we the proposal i'm going to be finishing yeah. off today will be uh, a strategy a full-on strategy session for the client to develop a proper video marketing strategy for the business in all three territories and then development of, I think I'll put together maybe f five to 10 different video versions with 12 different variations for each for the ads so yeah. we can actually split everything. Yeah. And with different titles and different fonts and literally everything so that everything is variated so that we'll end up with like 50 videos yeah. at the end. And an ongoing project, an ongoing development of, of videos and iterations and the client value now it's no longer just a once-off. Off. No. We are now their partner when it comes to video marketing. And and that's what a lot of creators could could really creatives could really benefit and, and learn how to do better. Yeah. Um yeah. So I just think that that's it's it's really helped us. And I and we finished the conversation, he says that this is he actually I remember he just said like this is the this is exactly what we needed. We actually exactly needed this conversation because he was thinking that they need X, Y, and Z. And I was like, my guy. Well, I hope this is exactly what everyone watching needed. Because yeah. what can we add to that? That is, <laughs> that is a great yeah. full stop. Just boom. <laughs> boom. Boom. Thanks for having me, bro. This was... When are you going back to Cape Town? Because we're going to miss you, bro. It's been nice to have you here. <laughs> i got to be honest. 
<laughs> it's been refreshing to be Joe, bro. It's been refreshing. It's trap, yeah. Hey. It's it's but it's been so refreshing. Dry. Yeah. You know, man, you know, you know that sometimes I hold myself back because I now start sounding like a. You know, they call it the typical game tone. Yeah, yeah. I come and I go, oh, so I'm many missing potholes. the mountain, yeah, darling. Yeah, I come and I go, oh, the potholes. And I go, bro, I was living here for eight years. I never yeah. used to come. The sorts of things that I said, now, I always have to hold myself back now. I was like, I don't want to be that guy, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Go, It's so dry here. I'm like, hey, Matt, what you saying this? I'm just going to look away, it's, bro. It's <laughs> trap. I've been using so much cream, bro. Yeah. Like, I'm And I'm out here in shorts. Scaly. Every two hours. <laughs> every You're not ashy, hours. though, so it's fine. Because every two hours, I've got a travel lotion out there. <laughs> for real? <laughs> Every two hours, on the clock, I go, yo, otherwise? Yeah, it's trash. Yeah, you can't, it can't be cold outside and then you try and then people go, yeah, yeah, you're hurting yourself. But if you look moisturized and it's cold, then they go, nah, this, this, this. He's visiting. This, yeah, I know, he's visiting. <laughs> it's, uh, he's not from there. Yeah. He's not from, it's the craziest thing. I'm never labeled as a South African, especially in Cape Town. That's crazy. It's the craziest it's so thing. so bizarre. It's, I go, what, then what am I? It's the hair. It's the hair. It's bad. But it's good. I love it. I, I'm, Matt's massage. I actually, bro, I need to come visit Cape Town. I have been back in so long. Yeah, in so long. The last time you were with us, yeah? I was there a long time ago, though. <laughs> bro, you went out with us once and you never went out with us again. No, bro, that night was mad. We will never <laughs> speak about that <laughs> on a recorded <laughs> Bro, the stuff I saw that night was illegal. <laughs> I swear to God. Yo, you're not illegal like that because people are going to start coming from. Not like no, no, that, no, not like that. that. No, no, no. But just, oh, bro, just legal, know illegal. Like that came out with us once and never again. That's it. That's not that's true. Right. That's not true. Yeah. But that's not true. But that night, yes, it's my G. Uh, yo, I, I, I saw a different side of the world. A different different people live different ways. Yeah. yeah. I'm um, happy to not go back there to that side. Yeah. That's good, man. Yes, it's right. Yeah. Thank you, guys. We have to leave. We don't we, yeah, leave we need now. Cut. We, we cut. don't leave now. Right, thank you. That's, yeah. Thank you. Man. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, thank you for having me. We'll chat soon. Yeah. Love Mad you. love for you guys. What a vandal. Love you, bro. Love you, bro. Mad love for you, my G. Oh, it's only 2 o'clock. <laughs>